Good morning, friends. It is Thursday, October 8th. And as you all know by now, I'm Dana Corsello, the Canon Vicar of the Cathedral, and so happy to be with you this morning and to pray as we begin a new day. We are called this morning to turn our hearts to you. Let us pray. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking, as Jesus did, the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting, O God, that you will make all things right if I will surrender to your will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Our praise this morning begins, Rejoice, rejoice, people of God. Celebrate the life within you and Christ's presence in your midst. Our eyes shall be opened, the presence will have new meaning, and the future will be bright with hope. Rejoice, people of God. Bow your heads before the one who is our wisdom and our strength. We place ourselves before our God, that we may be touched and cleansed by the power of the Spirit. Our scripture this morning is from Luke, Luke chapter 16, beginning at the 19th verse. And I know that you all know this scripture. Jesus said, there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in manner evil things, but now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us is a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they may not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father, Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Now, Jesus was talking about, of course, the religious authorities, the chief priests, the scribes. And as you all know, it gets down to their lack of regard for the little ones for the sinners, for the faithless, or those who are not yet in the fold, um, the other, basically the other. And at this juncture in the Bible, these religious authorities have more concern with their own stature and for their own recognition. Um, he calls them hypocrites at one time. So. And, you know, during this gospel, it, I've always been struck by the fact that when the rich man is in hell, he still wants Lazarus to come down and 
wait on him. He still has, he still cannot get out of this frame of mind of who he is and why he's in hell. Um, so this made me think. There's this meme going around Facebook right now and I think Twitter. And um, they attribute it to a Turkish proverb. But after doing some research, many cultures have appropriated it. But it basically goes like this. The forest was shrinking, but the trees kept voting for the axe. For the axe was clever and convinced the trees that because his handle was made of wood, he was one of them. Now you can read into that whatever you want, but the basic premise of this is that um, we need to be warned by aiding in our own undoing, just like these trees have done. Um, often, we can be our own worst enemy by trusting in those with whom we've given authority or the privilege or those who serve us. Um, this is really like an Aesop fable. fable. Many, many cultures have, um, have adopted this, as I said. It's, the trees see how foolish they have been in giving their enemy the means of destroying themselves. So let me read another version. Because this is what Lazarus has done to himself. He probably knew what he was doing, and he probably on some level knew it wasn't right. And he didn't listen. He didn't listen to Moses and the prophets. And now he's paying the ultimate price. So this is an English version. A country fellow came one day into the wood and looked about him with some concern, upon which the trees, with a curiosity natural to some other creatures, asked him what he wanted. He replied that he only wanted a piece of wood to make a handle to his hatchet. Since that was all, it was voted unanimously that he should have a piece of wood, good, sound, tough, ash. But he had no sooner received and fitted it for his purpose than he began to lay about him unmercifully and to hack and hew without distinction, felling the noblest trees in all the forest. The oak is said to have spoken thus to the beech in a low whisper, brother, we must take it for our pains. Meaning, Oh my gosh, look what we've done. Look what we've done. So you can take this in any context that you would like. But in the context of my morning prayer, sometimes our own misfortunes of our own doing. Um, so we can find ourselves undone by our own folly. Um, and I, I, I just think it's, it's really, it's an Aesopian type fable, but let me read it again. This is the one, this is the meme. The forest was shrinking, but the trees kept voting for the axe, for the axe was clever and convinced the trees that because his handle was made of wood, he was one of them. So I'm going to leave that with you. <laughs> um, leave that with you in light of this Lazarus passage and the rich man and Lazarus. And we pray that um, we will learn our lesson. And that's what the Bible's for, is to show us, show us a way forward. Now, I'm going to continue with our affirmation for today. We believe in God, who loves us and wants us to love each other. This is our God. We believe in Jesus, who cared for children and held them in his arms. He wanted a world where everyone could live together in peace. This is Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit who keeps working with us until everything is good and true. This is the Holy Spirit. We can be the church which reminds people of God because we love each other. This we believe, amen. In our prayers, my friends, I'd like to continue 
<clears throat> as we are in this season of election tide, continue with the prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. And I'd also like to acknowledge our Center for Prayer and Pilgrimage, which as everyone knows by now, we're celebrating its 25th anniversary. So we pray for Terry and all those wonderful people who make the Center for Prayer and Pilgrimage what it is. And let us pray today. Our prayer for October 8th is for peace. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love, so mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory now and forever. Amen. As we begin this day, give us your peace. As we pause this morning, give us your peace. As we do the work you've given us to do, give us your peace. For all the places in need of this world, give us your peace. And trusting you, O oh God, to care for your children, give us your peace. Give us your peace as we seek wholeness. Give us your peace. And so my friends, I ask you to think, what is it that you need today? What kind of peace do you need today? As we reflect on your presence, let us be peace for others. Holy One, we are too often blinded by trivial matters. Lord, may our attention be diverted now from those things, and may we become as little children, trusting and seeking with love to cross bridges that we have not crossed in the past. Amen. We are called in the morning to turn our hearts to you. And so may God's peace, may God's love, may God's mercy bless you, keep you, and protect you and those whom you love this morning forevermore. Amen.